This video is about how can God be just when he forgives past sins. Hi, I'm Bake Adafi, and this is Bible Study Verse by Verse. If you'd open your Bible to the New Testament, to the book of Romans, to chapter 3, we'll begin in just a moment. Romans chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. God is righteous to forgive sins that are past. Now, listen to these verses. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. That is, sins are completely paid for. The complete wrath of God is poured out upon Jesus for, for sins of his people. Through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. To God, it's just God declaring his righteousness. He is right to forgive sins because they're not, you don't just get a pat on the back, go your way, I, I forgive you. No, they're paid for in Christ. For the remissions of sins that are past. Are you listening? Past sins are forgiven in what Jesus did. Through the forbearance of God. God was, was forbearing toward those past sins. Toward all those New Testament, uh, I'm sorry, Old Testament people who looked at those animals and had faith in that, that those sacrifices would take away their sins. They never really did. They only pointed to what Christ would do in the New Testament. Until Christ came into the world, God exercised forbearance. That is self-restraint and tolerance towards sin. This is salvation in the Old Testament. It looks forward to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ for sin. And it did not punish those people who looked forward to it, but waited for those sins to properly be dealt with by Christ in his sacrifice. Hebrews 9, 12 and 15 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place. So the he is Jesus. And it wasn't goat's blood or calf's blood. It was his own blood, his death. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to, serving, to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, now listen, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, that's the Old Testament, those who are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Jesus' death not only took care of all the sins of the people that believe on him after he died, it took care of all the sins of the people who believed before he died. His death was the payment for sin. And notice in this verse, this is a bonus, your conscience can be purged from your sins. In other words, you don't have to have a conscience about your sin. It doesn't have to hound you. It doesn't have to keep you up at night or worry you or you feel guilty about your past sins. He purges your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He makes you new. He wants your service. He doesn't want you worrying about those things that he's already forgiven. You're forgiven for those. If you see a sin, confess it. He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Go to him in faith. Understand that your conscience can be clean and cleared because of what he did in the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is better than the Old Testament sacrifices. He gives eternal redemption. He purges your conscience. He redeems all the transgressions that are under the Old Testament. Verse 25 declares his righteousness for the remission of sins past. In other words, he's right in doing this. He's not, it's not a sleight of hand that he does this. God declares his righteousness so for all the sins that occurred before Christ that God would forgive, he is just not to punish them as he, forward, as he looks forward to what Christ would do, his atonement. 
Thus the atonement was planned before the foundation of the world. It was a done deal before God said in Genesis 1.1, let there be. Before that, Jesus was the, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Before the foundation of the world, it was a done deal, even though it was yet future. So Christ was the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. John 1, verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How do you know that? Jesus hadn't died yet. The Holy Spirit is, is uh, confirming that that is the one who's the Messiah, who's the Savior of the world. Revelation 13, 8, And all who dwell on the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Listen, every knee is going to bow to Jesus. Whether you've believed in him on earth and been saved or not, you will bow before him. <laughs> and he's the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. This isn't a plan that occurred after men had, men had sinned and God said, what am I going to do about this? I've got to fix this. No, no. This happened before the creation of the world. This was God's plan from all eternity. So God declares His righteousness to forgive past sins, the Old Testament ones, based on the future New Testament sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. In other words, God for, God's forgiveness had an actual basis. It wasn't just a pat on the head, go your way, don't, for, don't worry about it, forget about it. Just like the New Testament sins, sins required death to be paid for. And God's righteousness paid for those sins in the death of the Lord Jesus. Verse 26, to, I, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of those who believe in Jesus. Payment is required. Payment is accomplished on the cross. Justice has been achieved. Guilt does not go unpunished. Death is earned by sinners. And Jesus substitutes himself and takes the penalty for those who believe in him, for those sinners, in the place of all of God's people, Old Testament and New Testament. God maintains the integrity of his character. He has regard for his own law and its penalty, and he satisfies it. To forgive without atonement would be unjust. But you can see in verse 25 or 26 that God is just and the justifier. Sins are paid for, and then he forgives you. That's what it's talking about. To forgive without atonement would be unjust. Worldly pardons sometimes happen like this. Presidents or governors or people in authority can, can um, pardon criminals. Now, they may, you know, really deserve punishment, but the pardon isn't, the pardon just sets them free from their penalty. That's not what happened with God. God doesn't just set us free from our penalty. He pays the penalty himself. It's paid for, and we get to go free from that penalty. His penalty is satisfied. He's the justifier of all those who believe in the Lord Jesus. Their penalty is satisfied. Verse 22, in the beginning of that verse, says that God is righteous to forgive all who believe. Romans 8.33 says, who shall, lay any charge to, 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 who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's a rhetorical question. God has saved you now, Satan will try to lay things to your charge. He will accuse you before God. He'll accuse you in your conscience. He'll accuse you by the people around you. He'll try to make your circumstances accuse you. He'll try to put you back in the old ruts that you used to live in before you got saved. But none of those things really are going to work. Who will lay anything to the charge of God's elect? In God's mind, your sins are paid for. You don't have to pay for them. They're done with. There's no sin that can be laid to your charge. It is God who justifies. Your sins are forgiven. You've been justified. No charge can be laid at the foot of God's elect people. 
God is justified. So, God is just to forgive sins, no matter when they happen, because they're paid for and redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there. Then you can click on the playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this video, you can email me at all one word, Bible study, v by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study, verse by verse.